Yo, what's going on guys? Hanging out on the doors here. My name is Dimitri, back with another video. If you guys are new here, thank you guys so much for stopping by. If you could, it would be huge. Drop a like on this video, hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the video. At the end, not right now, you don't have to do anything right now, you don't know who I am. But at the end, it would be much appreciated uh, if you could do that. In today's video, we have an exciting one. We have Ghast Ghost XV uh, bowstrings from my Phase 433, and we're going to be going ahead and swapping them out today. Um, if you guys missed the last video, we go over the essentials that you need to get done before the hunting season, right around this mid-August mark. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you go check it out. We mentioned changing out bowstrings. If that is a necessity, do it now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do it now. Alright guys, so real quick, before we get too, too far into the video, I just wanted to mention we have a giveaway going on. It's going to be on our website. You can go ahead and head over to the link in the description below. It'll take you right there. Super simple to enter. There is no hidden fees. It's completely free. No hidden shipping fees or charges. Completely free. You sign up. You put in your information. If you win, we ship it to you. Um, so there's no like deadline or anything on this giveaway. It's basically you go there, you enter. Once we hit 100 entries, we're going to just pick a lucky winner and we'll already have all your information and stuff. We'll shoot you an email um, just so that we can get your address and everything like that, and then we ship you your products. So if you guys are interested in that giveaway, make sure that you go check it out. The link will be in the description below. Head over there, enter to win. We really wanna give back to one of you guys. Let's go ahead, throw the bowstrings on the phase four. All right guys, so real quick, I just wanna mention this before we get started. While we're here over at the bow press is that this can seem very intimidating. I know it was for me at first when I started changing out my bowstrings and stuff, but it's really not. It's super simple to do. And there are a couple of bulletproof things that you can do along the way to make sure that your axle to axle and your poundage and everything stays the same and you make sure that your timing's right. So um, along the way, I'm gonna be sharing all of that with you. So do not fear every tip and everything that I've learned changing bowstrings is gonna be translated over to you guys so that you guys have the knowledge, basically. So with that being said, let's go ahead and throw our bow up in the press. All right, guys, so it's in here now. It's nice and secure. I'm not worried about it falling out or anything. I wanna just give you my first tip. This is what I do every single time. I've changed five or six bowstrings um, on a Matthews, but this is what I do. Every single time I'll take a picture of how these yoke systems go and I'll make sure that I reference whether it's the top cam or the bottom cam. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some pictures. And how I know that it's the top is I'll include the 33 and I know it's the back because I'll have my V-bar in it. Then I'll go ahead and I'll take a picture of my cam sometimes if they're confusing. I mean, Matthews is generally really good with their cams and the way that they're set up that I'm not even gonna bother for this time. But if you guys are new and you want to uh, take a picture of how it goes, go ahead and do that. I'm then gonna take a picture of the roller guard because that is important. That way I know how each string goes to the roller guard. So I know that this yoke system goes through and it's on the front. And I know that this yoke system goes through the bottom one and it goes through on the back. So very simple, that's what I like to do. The next step is going to be to cut out your peep sight if you plan on reusing it. Now, I'm actually not going to do that, and I have a reason for that. It is because I actually have a new peep sight that I'm going to be installing on my new bow. It is new color scheme, but it has an adjustable aperture on the back. I shoot an eighth inch uh, aperture because I have a 28 and roughly like a quarter draw length, so I use an eighth inch aperture. Because of that draw length and because of the size of my scope, the UV3, it just works well with my draw length, the eighth inch peep sight. So I'm gonna take this and I leave it up here on my press in the little Harbor Freight cups that I have. And then for my D loop, I actually have new red BCY number 24 D loop material to replace that. And it's a good reference point. Now I can measure from here to here and set my peep sight on my new string once it's all set up and done. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna take some measurements of this and just make sure that it's um, that I have it so that I can give myself a rough peep sight placement when I go to set up the new bow. Five and a half, peep the D-loop. All right guys, so now that we have our measurement taken from here to here and we have like all of our pictures taken and stuff, uh, I just wanted to briefly mention that if you're going to be cutting out your peep sight, use a sharp razor 
and that you cut along the side of your string like so just because you don't want to nick your string just for whatever reason even if your string is in uh, decently bad shape you can probably still get away with using it in a pinch if something were to happen to your main bowstring that you're changing out you can always use it as a backup now whether or not you're like in the field when it happens it's a totally different story but I like to keep it as a backup just as a pinch so I recommend you be as careful as possible when you're cutting out your peep sight or your uh, D loop. Let's go ahead, press the bow, and take the main string off. All right, so I'm just going to come here and make sure that the um, little arms on my press are nice and seated. If you uh, tighten up one that's looser than the other, that just makes it so that you get a nice even press on the two uh, dual limbs. And then we just go ahead, hold this up, and we get to pressing. I compress it a decent amount just because I know from experience that it takes a little bit. And you take your main line off, you go ahead, pull it through, do not let it twist. That way you save the twists so that when you go to put it back on, you have to do minimal um, twisting. This side you can't see, but it's just basically it's exactly the same as the, the back side here. Bring the two ends together the way that they came off, don't let them twist, and then you can go ahead and put um, like a paper clip. A lot of the companies when they send you your strings they'll have a paper clip. I'm going to take the cable guard off first. That way it just makes it nice and easy. I can pop these off and it's just an extra step that I lose. So I'm going to go ahead and take my cable guard off. So for this Matthews phase four it is a 332nd Allen key. Let's pop it loose and then I do recommend that you put some thread locker on there uh, when you go to reinsert this. Make sure that you're pushing the rollers in because it can get caught on the screw a little bit and it can just cause some issues uh, when you go to put it back. So that right there is your roller guard assembly. Super easy to take in and out. Is that well lit? I think it's well lit. So you just go ahead I don't know exactly what size Allen key these are because uh, these are just like from a random set that I have. And then I take a big um, Allen key and then I just go and I just push this right through on the other side and shoot. Oh, uh, we take our axle out. You don't want to do that. You don't want to drop your axle the way that I just did, but it's hardened steel, so it should be fine. That goes in there. Then we can go ahead and take our little Allen key out. And then our cam just pops right out. All right, and then once we have our cam out, it should just pop right out. We can take our yokes off here. They might be stuck a little bit just from being compressed in there for so long, but our yoke system just pops right out. Just push that off to the side, and then you flip the cam over, and that should be out right there. And you can just hold this off to the side and hook it onto something so that it doesn't untwist. Flip the cam back over. Put it in there and then I like to slide my axle back through just to hold my cam in place. So you don't have to stick it all the way through because you're just going to have to push the axle and the cam back out anyway when we go to put the new strings through our yokes here. So I just keep the axle in there that holds it in place and it keeps it secure. And then we go ahead and we do the same thing to the other side. We just pop our yokes out. And then we take the cable off the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, guys. So now if you did it right, you should have a yoke system and cable just like this coming off your bow. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this plastic piece out because this needs to get transferred over to the new strings. It does not come with that. So we just go ahead without letting this end turn. I'll go ahead and put it between my knees here. We go ahead and we open up this little uh, knot. 
It's almost like a D loop, how this like little hook and loop system works on this. Then we just go ahead and we pull the whole thing through, but it's basically just a loop that pulls through the entire cable. You take it off here, like so. Plastic comes out, and boom. That is nice and secure now. That way, if you ever have to put these back on for an emergency or anything like that, um, it's going to be relatively close, and it might take just one or two small adjustments to get it exactly where you had it. So with that being said, we're gonna do that to the yokes as well. The yoke system, you just kind of peel this out off. Boom. Take these two ends, don't let them untwist, pinch them together. Put your paper clip around that. So, when you go to put your cables on or your yoke systems on, I just keep the paper clip on them. I'll go ahead and open it up. I'll get it ready and then I'll start putting it into the track just so that it's out of the way. So this does not matter. The plastic pieces are not individualized. They don't, there's not one for each specific side. But what I do is I make sure that the serving distance on either side is exactly the same. And I do that by like kind of taking it, pinching it together, making sure that it makes like a perfect oval. And then you find the center of that and that center goes in the yoke. Now, depending on your uh, manufacturer, the serving is going to be a little tight, but it should kind of like clip and fall right into those grooves. So you want to make sure that you get it into the grooves pretty good. And then it should just snap right into those grooves and it should be a pretty tight fit. All right guys, so now that I have the plastic piece on the yoke, it's the same for the other side. So I'm just going to flip you over to this cam right here in front of me and uh, we'll go into how this goes on and then I'll do the other one off camera. I'm just going to take my axle out for now, keep it off to the side, take my cam, put it off to the side, get my yoke system ready right here. Boom. So then what I'll do is I'll bend open the paper clip like that just so that I don't chance nicking the brand new strings at all. And I hold them just like that in their exact position, the way that they're going to come off. I'll just take these out, take my paper clip out. And then it's ready to go on to the cam. You just very simply put this over on one side and put it over on the other. Now I find that because these are a very low wax string, they don't really like to sit in the grooves of these cams that well and set this back in there. And that way I know that they're secure. And as you can see, my yoke system is a little off. So that's going to have to get adjusted um, afterward. And then once you have it in there and seated, then we can just go ahead and put our axle through. You go ahead, push the axle through and that's in there. And now we can go ahead and get our yoke uh, figured out and situated. Now it is kind of a pain in the ass because like I was saying, the, the string diameter, because it's such a low wax string, it is thinner than the zebra strings that come on the Matthews bows. So this part is a little bit uh, frustrating because it seems like the cable just wants to constantly pop off of the thing there. All right guys, so I have the other side done too. I don't have the screw back in, but I have this here. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to go ahead and feed up one of our cables through here. And we're gonna run it down to the um, other side and wrap it around the cam. I have my um, cable that I took out. I took the paper clip off and everything. It's here. You do not want to let these untwist. You just open it up like this. So if we refer back to our pictures that we took, is the loop under here like this, and then you put the other side back through. So now it's very simple. We just pop it off of our back cam here. We don't let it turn. You pull it up and under like so. And then you feed everything through here. You do not want to let it turn. And then you feed everything through here, including the serving. Get everything up through. 
like so. Do not let it turn. Close that loop back up. So that's how we install this onto the yoke. Now um, there is like a loop end that goes on the back here that wraps around a different way on the back of the cam. So we'll go ahead and flip the camera around back so you can see it and we'll show you how we uh, mount that up. All right guys, so I have you on the back side here. It's gonna be a little hard to show just because of the angles and the way that these um, press posts get in the way. But basically, as you can see, there's like a channel here inside of your cam mod, specific to Matthews, obviously. Then you're gonna, you're gonna come around this post, there's a little arrow on it. So you come around this way and then it loops right over this post right here. So sometimes what I like to do is I'll actually go ahead and get my loop around the little post there and then I'll bend it and make my run down like so. I hope you could see that. Um, it's a little tricky to catch on camera but that's how I go and do that and now both of our cables are ready to get routed into our cable guard over here. So if we reference our picture, this is where pictures definitely come into play because this might be a little tricky for someone who hasn't done this before. Alright guys, so we have thread locker on this now. It is nice and secure. And now we can just move on to putting on the main string, which is arguably one of the simplest things that you can do in this whole process. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now I want to make something clear on your main line. There's going to be like a little tag somewhere along the way. So basically this tag is like a little indicator that splits the bundles up. Uh, when the string is made and this just basically allows you to put the peep sight in the very center of the string um, It's a long process. You kind of have to look up how a string is made for that to make sense uh, But you want this to be on uh, closer to your top cam uh, Pretty much because that's where the peep sight goes and you want the peep sight uh, Right in line with your sight. So that's why we do that now. I'm just going to go ahead get this ready now I like to just take this end and hook it over here so that I know that it won't unwind on me while I'm doing this next step, which is setting it up on this end. So basically what we do with this side right here, this is like our little loop end. You come over, you come through, if you see here, you come through this side and you come through the, uh, the limbs there. Then you come up and you come through the yoke system in the back over here. And then you come up and attach it to the post on your cam. And then you take this and you run it back down and around. And then I like to leave it off until I finish uh, this side over here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera because it's exactly the same thing. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, so I have that side set up the same way. You just go ahead, flip this around, and boom, you have it set up. Now, like I was saying, these yokes are going to just pop off 24-7 until you get a little bit of tension on the string. So that's going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass at first. Once you get used to it, you'll know. But you definitely want to double check if in the future, you know, when you're pressing your bow. And now we can go ahead and screw back in our little bolts and uh, washers here for our axles in the last step. And I like to put thread locker on these. I just tighten those up until they're pretty darn snug. Don't strip them, that would be bad news. All right guys, so we have everything pretty much squared away and then we can really like yank up on it a little bit and just make sure that everything is seated. And then we can go ahead and start to let some pressure back down on the bow, which is the exciting part. Make sure that everything's in its groove, that nothing is unhappy where it's sitting as you're doing this. Make sure that everything is good. Let all the tension back on the bow. And all the tension's back on the bow because my limbs are starting to slide in the press. So once you know that, and you know that your limbs are starting to slide in the press, you know that you're pretty good if you didn't hear any snapping. I'm just kidding. Um, so now what we can do, if your bow can slide like this in the limb pocket, you're in pretty good shape. Now we can go ahead and take out our tape measure. 
and get a quick measurement, um, axle to axle. Basically measure from the top of the bolt to the bottom of the bolt. And we are at 33 exactly. So pretty damn, like pretty damn good. Spot on with the measurement there. You can go ahead and slide these, make sure that they're sitting well, but after a couple of shots, they should adjust themselves right back to normal. Um, so that was checking the axle to axle. That's a pretty important step. You wanna make sure your axle to axle is good. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the uh, timing of the bow. And the timing of the bow, there's these holes down here on the bottom of the cam. Again, Matthew specific, but there should be some timing indicators on your bow uh, when you're doing this. So yeah, my timing is off by a little bit. This one is okay, but this one needs to get sped up. And the way that we do that is by taking a twist out of this bottom cable or putting a twist into this one. Now this one looks like it's pretty good. This one looks like it has maybe one more twist into it. So we'll go ahead and take it out of this one. So instead of, um, you know, just showing you a 15 minute long clip of me just rambling about a bunch of nonsense and it not making much sense and not being an interesting video, I figured it would be better off to just make it a voiceover. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it and just uh, give you a brief overview on how this process is done. So basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, figure out the timing of your bow first. So basically how this works and how you check the timing on a Matthews anyway, is you check the timing holes that are machined into the cams. Now if the cable is running low in that hole or is just completely past the hole going low, that means that your uh, cam is running slow. If it's all the way at the top or past the top, then that means that your cam is very hot or uh, fast. So what you're going to do to counteract that is, let's just give you an example, let's say that it's slow, and then obviously if it's hot, it would just be the polar opposite of what I say here. Um, let's say that it's running slow in your bottom cam, just like we showed in the video. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to take a twist out of that bottom cam or put it into the top cam and that will uh, hopefully speed things up and then it should get better. And if it doesn't get better, it's still slow, just do it again until it matches your other uh, top cam exactly. And basically what you're aiming for is the cables to be running through the exact center of those machined holes on the cams. All right, so let's say that you then speed them up and they match, but let's say that by the time that you do this and you get everything figured out, so let's say that the both of your cables are exactly at the same height, but they are low or past the timing holes. What you're gonna wanna do is take uh, a couple of twists out of your main string. And the reason why you do that is because, uh, yeah, kinda have to like loosen it up and let those, let those cams roll back over so that the uh, cables cut through the center. And that's how you fix that. And then once you get to that point and you get your timing absolutely perfect in the center of those holes, that's where your cams should be resting. That's how they were designed to rest. So you know you're in good shape. Then you can go ahead and figure out how you adjust your axle to axle length. Now adjusting your axle to axle length is very simple as well. All you have to do is uh, basically just measure it. If you're measuring uh, over 33, you want to put the same amount of twists in the cables and in the string, um, and that will just kind of equally and incrementally pull those axles together. Your cables won't move in those timing holes, basically. And then if you, obviously, if, if they're too short, if your axle to axle is too short, then you do the same thing. You just untwist, and you make it um, an equal amount of twist in all cables and strings, and that should stretch your axle to axle a little bit and uh, put it right to spec. Now, if it's a very small adjustment, you got a sixteenth of an inch that you're off, you could just leave it. And if you're like a sixteenth of an inch short, it might stretch after a couple of shots. And if you're a sixteenth too long and you just, you know, you're not happy with it, you, you're a, a 0.2 ounces away from being at your target uh, draw weight, you can go ahead and put a half twist into all your cables and strings and it should uh, give you the same result. So I hope that that kind of cleared some things up and that made sense. If it doesn't make any sense to you guys, you guys are wondering what the hell did, did he just say, uh, please feel free to uh, shoot me a comment. If uh, you are really struggling and need help, I'll be more than happy to email you and go back and forth and give you some pointers. But 
uh, yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right back into the video. All right, guys, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up, but I have a couple important things that I want to mention before, um, you know, I end the video. Basically, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and throw our D-loop on and get it perfectly square with our string. That's just kind of, you know, the next step, common knowledge. But then what we're going to do is we're going to throw it up on the draw board or whatever you have. If you don't have a draw board, you can draw it back and have your buddy look. Uh, we're checking the timing of the cam sync. Now, um, the holes are one way to do it, but that's only can get you like so accurate. Um, the best way to do it is to draw your bow back and watch your cable stops roll and hit your cable at the same time. Uh, that's basically what you want. It's gonna give you a nice solid back wall. And that's what you want to uh, sync up your cams so that um, you also have pretty good tuning stability. Now, uh, the next step is going to be to go ahead and do that and then also tie in our peep sight. And with that measurement that we took, once we get our D-loop in place, we can get a rough set a rough set peep sight placement. And then all we have to do after that is just make sure that it's, when we draw back, it lines up with our sight and everything like that, and then we're good to go. Um, then after that would be tuning. Once you get a new string on there, you're gonna wanna make sure that you tune it. So. That's pretty much going to wrap it up. Those are the important things. If you guys want to know how to tie a D-loop, make sure you go check out the channel. We have a video on that. It'll be linked in the description below. And up next, I'm going to be showing you how to tie in a peep sight because um, I'm going to do that now. Obviously, I have to, so we'll make a video on that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, a thumbs up would be huge. Make sure you go check out that giveaway. Subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Ciao, guys.